Hang on. Hey, good morning. Ben here with Studio on the Lake. This is the uh, longer project that's going to be going on. This is part one. Here's an older clock that I never finished. And the reason I didn't finish, I'll tell you in a minute here, but it's basically out of that uh, uh, Dutch Elm that came from West Point when I was stationed there many years ago. And it's not stable wood. It uh, tends to warp and act crazy, and I'll, I'll show you about that in a minute. You see in the background the new face for the cuckoo clock uh, that is carved in, to the end of this video. I'll show you how I got there. There's the two pieces. I, I originally did the one on the left. I did that with uh, the Elmwood. Take a look at that uh, curve in that thing. It's ridiculous. It uh, sat around for oh, three or four days and did that. I, I assure you it was relatively flat when I started. Now look at it. I've got a bunch of tables that, that move like that that I've carved out of this stuff and it, it's interesting to some degree, uh, but uh, depending on the time of year, a drink will just slide right off that table. Uh, so I've, I've got the basswood blank. I decided to redo it in basswood. Uh, not 100% on how the design is going to go. Obviously, it'll have birds and that sort of thing. Uh, got a couple of ideas. Right now, I'm laying the mark out for that, that basswood. Uh, got a good pattern there. DeWalt grinding disc that looks to be about the right size as a clock face. and I'll lay that out. Hey, uh, something happened just the other day. A couple of folks subscribed and they said that they came over uh, from Gene Messer. And then I went ahead and looked it up and Gene Messer did mention the studio on the lake on his uh, Facebook page. And I wanna thank him for doing that and thank you guys that are coming over from there. It's kinda neat to see everybody that's coming over. You've got uh, a bunch of Geordies Johnson's people coming over from uh, Carving Fusion. Just Carve Rob is going crazy with his carvings. I noticed he just got himself a little micro carver. And uh, one of the interesting comments on that is he said, hey, I don't think you guys need to drill them anymore. This thing's powerful enough. Uh, well, that's no secret to me. That's something I've known for a lot of years. Uh, I did carve and with Dremels and various different things. Uh, some of the same stuff that Jordy Johnson had carved and fusion carves with, and I've kind of given that up uh, and narrowed down my tools, which you will do also. Speaking of tools, there's that uh, T-square. I think that was in a, a house we bought next door in a, in a tool pile for the rust that's all over it. So don't give me any grief about the rust on the, the thing. This is a fine antique. It's still square and I have no intention of trying to read the letters on it, so I just, I leave it there. Decided that the top of this uh, portion where the cuckoo comes out needed to be rounded, so uh, grabbed another fine template, uh, also known as a pulley, that just happened to have the right curve on that. So I'm gonna go back and, and draw in the uh, width of this thing. These are the framing portions that are going to go around the door. And I decided I wanted it to go just a little bit further as an overhang. If you've watched some of my videos before, there, there's really no rhyme or reason. You're going along and decide that, well, this would look better this way. So you change the design midstream. One of the dangers of not working with a pattern. Sometimes it ends up in the fireplace hey this may 10th up here we we're supposed to have warm weather today we spent all day yesterday out uh, uh, putting up parts of the greenhouse at the woodlot and, and intended to finish that today not gonna happen it's 32 33 high today so I think I'll go back out to the studio after we get this posted and uh, work on a couple more sections of this I don't have to work in the cold so I don't. It's one of the beauties of not having a job outside in the cold. This is interesting right here. I, you see I started burning on this thing and uh, my pen gave up. That's the pen I'm pulling off there. What happens is the, the tips are uh, 
one piece and eventually they'll crack down through the middle and you no longer get an electrical contact. I shaved these pins off on the side. That's a, a newer, new one that I pulled out of the tube. When I get three or four of them, I think I have two or three of them right now, I send them back over to uh, PJ Enterprises or whatever the heck the name of it is over in Minnesota. Uh, and uh, If I'm really lucky, six months later, that guy will give me back pens with new tips in them. The, the pen itself is about 20 bucks if you buy it outright. Um, you can't change the tips yourself, although you send them back to him, he uses the pen body and for, uh, I forget, uh, six or seven bucks, puts a new tip in there. And you can change the tip to anything you want, so it doesn't have to be the exact same tip that was in there. I, once again, this is a layout portion of this. I, I'm using this as a stop cut. I could actually take a knife or a V-gouge and uh, outline these. That dial, clock face dial in the center there is going to be a little bit raised up from the rest of it, so I will carve our, uh, the wood around that down uh, in a step or a level. Uh, they call that relief carving for those of you that are interested. You could do a whole carving that hung on the wall like a pitcher uh, with various different levels in the relief carving. It's not carving in the round, uh, meaning you can turn it all the way around and it has three dimensions to it. I did speed this up a little bit, but right now I'm just going around the outline of all of these. I'll come back later on with my carving tool. It works out pretty good if you're using a flame like I tend to use. The tip of the flame uh, rides along the edge of this uh, stop cut and you don't end up, if you were trying to do this freelance with the uh, burr, uh, at some point you'd lose focus or it'd grab and uh, end up messing up the outline that you kind of wanted to leave. Yeah, this is kind of evolving as we go along. With the COVID stuff, every, all the carvers that I, that I, I follow and, and, and watch, they, they've been cranking stuff out, and that's a good thing. My life hasn't changed much. I still get to go to work which is a blessing, I guess, to some folks if you're sitting at home wondering if you're going to get to go back to work. I still have to work. I think I might enjoy actually getting paid, of course. That would be the secret part, to get paid uh, and sit at home. So there's the center. I, I went ahead and cut the window out. I, I took that over the scroll saw, drilled a hole in it, obviously, and uh, cut that out. You'll see throughout the thing that I'll give you a little bit of what I'm doing in real time and then I tend to speed it up. So here's what I was talking about. I've got uh, the, the two carvers at some point in here, uh, if I miss it while I'm yakking, uh, I, I don't zoom in and I, you'll see the carving station in the background. But here's, here's my newer uh, uh, handpiece. They ironically look a lot like the ones that Rob uh, over at Just Carve Rob just bought from Amazon. I, ha I did look at those, the same one that he bought. Looks to me like somebody, perhaps China, heck I don't know, uh, makes these hand pieces and then various different people adapt different controllers to them. Because uh, they, they look suspiciously the same with the exception and they, they all have the same criteria there you go that's uh, not zoomed in you see my carving station on the back yeah Jordy I'm sitting in a chair I got a pillow under my arm there's also probably Star Trek going on the TV in the background which is why I do a voiceover I don't have the patience to sit there for four hours and talk directly at the camera or to the camera I have enough trouble uh, keeping this thing focused on on what I'm doing so there's the outline of all the stuff on there uh, the center I, I wanted a raised dial 
but the center of that I wanted to be round so first I go over with a, a coarser grit if you see the blue hand piece I tend to use uh, I think it's an eighth inch bit in there they are cuts all same thing Jordy uses uh, and Rob also uh, if you listen to some of this stuff Jordy just pulled out a new tool and it came with a oh 10 or 15 burrs and he said they're crap and he's right they are uh, I put those stick those in my uh, block of wood that has all the bits in there and I, I use and abuse those if I'm gonna do something insane uh, that has that I, that, that I need to it's gonna ruin a bit I'll use one of those uh, now you see the black hand piece this is this one's about 20 years, years old you've heard me talk about it before I used the finer uh, ones in that it's a 32nd bit so it's a little bit smaller uh, and this is a ruby uh, bit I think they're about 15 bucks a piece this one's probably three or four years old it, it's it's like fine sanding and not quite as aggressive and that, that's what I'm doing to the center of this I'm round rounding it over and you can see I'm turning it around and around and around so when, you, when you're carving if you're trying to carve uh, something to get a good look at it they recommend whoever they are the experts that you continue to turn it around and work on different sections of it it's, it's kind of like if you've ever watched any painting shows they they won't paint the complete part in the middle they'll work on one section go over and work on another section then come back and uh, the, in the end it all looks balanced and round <coughs> Here I've switched back. I've got everything pretty much down to the level that I want it to be down to uh, without the detail stuff in there. And I've switched back to a larger cuts all uh, on the blue hand piece. If, if you're curious, the blue is 40,000 supposedly and the black is 30,000. I, I can notice a little bit of difference in, in the speed. But basically, unless I'm using a cutoff wheel or something or a sanding wheel, I, I run these things wide open. I run them on 10. You can see that leaves a lot of fuzz. That's the basswood. Uh, hey, Jordy, your, your load of basswood is uh, coming in the mail. It says it made it through Canadian Customs and is, is in transit for delivery. So you should see that one of these days. Uh, this is something you're going to find on this stuff, Jordy, is this, uh, this stuff fuzzes up. So at some point you're going to have to maybe do these twice. Uh, you'll run over it with your big burr and it'll, it, it'll leave a little bit more fuzz than you're used to with that fine wood that, that you're uh, picking up off the beach that came from Russia or wherever it floated up from. You'll have to come back with a finer... Uh, a bit at some point and uh, clean that up or sand it. That's the downside to basswood. Uh, bird carvers uh, will use de decoy decorative carvers will use uh, the basswood but they prefer the tupelo uh, which obviously I can't get up here in the north because uh, tupelo doesn't grow in the swamps of Wisconsin. Uh, it grows down in Louisiana and uh, Florida and that sort of thing. They like to use the Tupelo because it doesn't fuzz up like this. It makes a fairly clean cut. Just like anything, any kind of wood you're using, you can carve any wood, but it, it each has each each of them have characteristics that uh, you just have to adapt. Now I, I went back to a knife. Uh, I, I noticed when I'm I, I can use I could have used the power carving stuff on the side here, but the knife I can get a really nice straight edge. You can kind of see that I did a uh, centering mark around the edge of that, and I'm, I'm rounding that face over somewhere close to that. That's just a Ramelson bench knife, they call it. Uh, 20 bucks, Amazon. I like it. This one's a couple years old. Haven't broke it yet. And this is just quicker to grab a knife. I, I did mention Gene Messer earlier. He does, uh, uh, d I haven't seen him do power carving. He does stuff with a knife. And he's a character carver. 
much like Doug Linker. And if you get a chance, go over and check out Doug's site and Gene's site. I'll put the links down in the description for those guys. But uh, Doug Linker uh, has mentioned Gene Messer before as one of his uh, influences in that. And they do a lot of the same type of stuff, character carving. That's not something that I do a lot of. Um, my style is just a little, little different than that. Nothing, nothing wrong with anybody's style. So you can learn something from everybody and develop your own style. So I've got the level down and I'm, I'm kind of sanded and I'll, I'll come in a little closer and show you here. Uh, you see how that stop cutter burn mark on there does a really nice job of uh, letting the tip of that, that uh, ruby flame guide along without cutting off what I want. I'm thinking probably a diamond pattern across the face of this. Uh, this is the end of the first part, and the second one I'll, I'll start working on a couple sides and then uh, putting this thing uh, together. So thanks for watching. As always, subscribe. Check out these other carvers and their sites, and you'll get some good stuff in there. By all means, subscribe, like, and comment. Hey, thanks. This has been Ben with Studio on the Lake.